Hey man, my name's Dylan. I'm just traveling around since I was 18 years old. Had a kid, got off the road for a minute, and as of last year, shit fell through. Here I am again. Where are you from, Mr. Dylan? Uh, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, birth certificate uh, says, and uh, I, I grew up in SoCal. I feel like most of my influence is from SoCal, from the barrio, straight up. My mom still lives out there. What kind of household did you grow up in? Uh, single mom. Uh, if you ask my mom, she will tell you we were uh, abused by today's standards, you know. It wasn't the best home, but my mom made five kids. Fucking half, and so I'm, I'm proud of her. What's your relationship like with your siblings? Uh, you know, I've been traveling around like this 24-7 since I was 18, so it's... It's, uh not the best you know it's not the worst it's just i only get to see them once a year what schools did you go to uh i went to school uh, as far as like my memory starts kind of i guess second third grade uh is when it really comes in strong uh by then i was in california and i went to port Wyoming uh elementary bard went to the Boys and Girls Club after while my mom worked, did boxing there. What do you remember most about growing up? Like, what, what are some of your memorable uh, childhood memories? Uh, just not giving a fuck. Uh, people in Cali, like kids in Cali back when I was growing up, probably even worse now, uh, they were just off the chain. Like, you just do whatever the fuck you wanted. There's no repercussions. Mom couldn't ground you because she had to go to work, you know. And there's five of us, and we knew it, so we definitely gave her hell. <laughs> did you graduate from high school? I did not. I I finished. I did like 30 day, 33 days of ninth grade, and that's it. Okay, so what happened after ninth grade? Where did your life go? Uh, it went from like my buddy selling a lot of ecstasy, like boats, and just me needing to clear my head, you know, just too long on that shit. Uh, moved from there to Tulsa, tried to meet my dad. After two weeks, he kicked me and my brother and sister out because we weren't on the lease. He was getting shit for it. And uh, I moved into the homie Grips fucking trap house, man. What was your experience like in uh, Brett's Trap House? And for those who uh, may not know, what, tell us what a trap house is. Uh, it's straight up, he had an apartment. Uh, uh, well, he had two apartments in this complex. And one, that's just where him and his family, brothers, sisters, whatever, I can't remember really. Uh, that's where they stayed. And then the second one was just for cooking, straight up. You ever been married? Uh, yeah, I'm currently still married. Uh, it just kind of fell through because we were just only together like four months riding trains, doing heroin, and thought we were in love and made a kid too fast. And uh, unfortunately, they... You ever thought about getting sober or, or are you still dealing with your addiction? Um, I'm only fucked up because I don't, don't have my kid. How old is your child? He's five. His birthday is uh, January 18th. His name's Waylon. When was the last time you spoke with him? Uh, when he's two and a half. Is your wife still, where is she located? Uh, somewhere rambling around, fucking, you know, doing the same thing, fucking. Like I said, uh, I don't even want to be out here. But. Who introduced you to that lifestyle? What, riding trains and stuff? From the addiction and did the addiction, so, yeah. I've always been, ever since, like I said, like I was like 13, 14, rolling balls, like for like the better half of a year you know like my buddy sold a lot of it and uh ever since then i just you know i've always loved getting high hit no doc really and uh
and uh, you know, I had a kid and got my shit together. I had a 2018 Camry. Baby mama had 2014 Equinox, you know. And uh, yeah, the relationship fell through and I had to leave Pittsburgh to uh, go to Colorado, get some, you know, uh, support from friends. Well, yeah. what what jobs have you held in your lifetime? Uh, carpentry and framing. Like I've built, helped build a multi-million dollar homes in Steamboat Springs. It's a ski resort town like Brackenridge or Bell. Or yeah, I started in Pittsburgh. That's where my kid was born, and uh, it just led up to that. Just getting lucky, I suppose. What made you stop doing your carpentry work? Uh just got tired of doing you know i work seven days a week out in pittsburgh like they just hustle too hard out there and by the time i hit colorado uh, i was just too worked after like you know two three years of it and then i uh, started doing tree work and i can operate machines on the side of a mountain you know i can fell trees next to you know hazardous power lines all that you look up my Instagram, uh, you can't win. What's your What's your Instagram? It's you can't win underscore after every word, all lowercase. And Is that I, what's on your sign? Yeah. Hold your sign up so we can see it again, so they can look you up. What was the money like working those jobs? Was it good money? Oh, better than I deserved because. Uh, that's when COVID first started hitting. No one had workers, you know. And uh, I went from making like 13, 14 bucks an hour in Pittsburgh to Colorado. I was making, when I just checked out uh, beginning of last year, it was 30, 32 dollars an hour. It felt great, you know. People relied on you and like valued, you know. Do you ever think about going back to that work? Uh, no, because shit just fell through in Colorado with friends and then back in, you know, just kind of hit deep. So it's not a place I would return to by choice, I guess. What, what interested you and what got you started with the whole hobo movement? Like, walk us through that. Who introduced you and how did it get started? Um, I don't know, I guess as a kid we were, you know, always getting evicted because of something, you know, and uh, just always moving around because of that. And, you know, I started running away from home, like 13. Yeah. Explain to us what a hobo is for people who don't know that. Well, a hobo is someone headed out for better opportunities. Uh, technically, most of us are tramps, you know, just tramping around, getting fucked up, really. What are all the places purpose. you visited being a hobo? Uh, all, and what's your mode of travel also? Uh, mostly freight trains. And as of nowadays, all, all freight trains. It's trying to get me so easy anyway. Where have the places you've been during your hobo travels? Uh, all of the lower 48 but South Dakota and Delaware. And I ain't gone to DC, I know it's not a state, but yeah. What's uh, your favorite place to visit? It really is uh, cliche as it sounds, like just in between is like the best times, you know, like the other night, uh, these this young couple, graffiti uh, couple, you know, uh, picked me up and drove me around got me high and shit and gave me a bunch of paint pens and shit like that was dope you know and i wouldn't say like yeah it's just this particular times you know are good how long do you see yourself living this lifestyle i mean unless like my kid you know gets old enough and hits me up and you know I, I don't have a reason not to, I guess. Who has your kid? 
Uh, grandma does, and she hates me just because, you know, my background. But if we got our job back and start making money again to take care of our child, well, don't I you think that would change grandma's well, sentiments towards you? Before I left, I was trying to get him to come from Pittsburgh out to uh, Colorado and uh, baby mama would bullshit me, try to get money, which I never sent her money other than the tax child credit, that three, four hundred a month. Uh, because I knew she was just high on dope, you could hear it. What about sending it to grandma, asking grandma what, what, what he needs and sending it to grandma? You know grandma do the right thing. Well, that's what I was doing with the tax credit, but uh, yeah. Other than that, she, uh, Grandma hates me a lot, even though uh, I was a great provider. Uh, I was younger and dumber, maybe not as wise in the relationship sense, but never physical or like abusive, nothing like that. And, uh, you know, her kid had a new car, fucking had, a fast stack on her. When I got paid, I just took enough for weed and cigarettes and gas, get work, and uh, that's it. If I wanted to splurge, I bought a new tool, but you know, uh, the yeah. only one who realized like what was fucked up, and this is just what hearsay from baby mom, and she bullshits to this day, I don't know why, um, that grandma was like the only one who, uh, knew I, you know, didn't deserve to be cut out of the kid's life. They lied to the courts that they couldn't get a hold of me. And that's bullshit. I got proof that I sent them that three, four hundred, I think it was three uh, a month. And uh, it's just connected to my Google account somehow. And even with, with that, lawyers are like, you don't have much of a chance. If you had a chance to go back and talk to the young Mr. Dillon, knowing what you know now, what would you tell them? Uh, you know, don't make a kid unless you, that's the one. And, you know, how can you really know that, right? But, yeah. Because you had to fuck them up. And if you could say anything to anybody who's looking for you, maybe worried about you, wondering if you're okay, Now's the time you could say it. Oh, no, I keep a phone and I try, I, I try to keep a phone. I've been through like 23 of them now since I left. Just cheap Walmart phones getting busted, you know, getting wet or stolen or dropped or you name it. Is it ever a time you think you'll get tired of this lifestyle and want to plug back into the mainstream? Um. Like I said, yeah, it's just, uh, so after, like, I moved back to Colorado, I, I hung in there for mo mostly a year and a half, you know, uh, there was some, you know, I took my car out to, uh, go see my mom and I wrecked it, which, thank God, gap insurance paid it, and I got paid, like, two grand, so, like, and I was struggling, you know, to stay in one spot. So that was a blessing, but I ended up having hot trains from Santa Fe to go see my mom for Christmas and then back to Kansas City. That's where I was at the time. How easy is it to hop trains and what's, what's, the, what's the process with that? So it depends where you're at, you know, like out west, it's more like solid main, you know, uh, uh, main routes, I, I'm slipping on the, what you would call them, uh, but you know, like the midline or the high line or the low line or even the sunset line, like, either you're going east or west, you know, there's some splits here and there, but like, it's not too hard to figure out, out here, like I said earlier, like, they go fucking everywhere from here, and I don't want to go south, I don't, I want to go up to Maine. Yeah. We we appreciate you sit down and, and talking with us, Mr. Dillon, and, and we wish you the best in your travels, man. Rock Thank and roll, you. Man.